Well, hello again, all my fluid art friends. It's Doris at DF Designs. I am going to do a geo since I had my glass rocks out. I mixed up, now I know I probably mixed up too much. I mixed up 10 ounces of art coat, craft coat, excuse me, stone coat countertops craft coat. And I'm going to do four colors with the glass. I'm going to do a no con blue by eye candy. There's a link down in the description where you can get 10% off with a code and I get a little kickback if you buy through my link. I'm also going to use some black diamond pearl. I'm also going to use the neon peach red from uh, just pigments and I thought I had another one. Oh and I forgot the name of this. This one's from just pigments too but um, when I go to put the video up I will put the name in there. I'm going to mix about two ounces of each color and then I'm going to put a, a coat of uh, clear on there. Just, some, just something to help the uh, um, resin. I don't know if it's going to flow because I'm going to try to make it into a little glass geode. But what I might do is I might just do a torch and tilt with these colors. And then add the rocks as accents. The rocks that I got out are, uh, I got two colors of uh, fire glass from Barbecue Guys. Yes, I buy fire glass from a place that's called Barbecue Guys. Um, and then I got uh, some small clear ones that are from um, Michael's. Um, they're in the uh, decorative filler Okay, and I'm going to save just a little bit just in case, just in case I need to drizzle over my stones to keep them in place. I'm going to let that sit while I mix up my colors. Now you're supposed to really mix up your, your mica powders by putting them in the bottom and then putting the resin on top of it but I always forget so when you add your mica powders to them on top of the resin and you go to stir and mix it up do it very slowly until the mica powder now this is a silver pearl by um black diamond because I had some to use up And then this one is the no con blue, which I need to get. I'm going to need to get another container soon. I, I seem to use this one a lot. I love it. Okay, that's the no con blue. The board is a 10, 10 by 10 cradle board. I had to look for a minute. And I primed it with, first I primed it with some Minwax polyacrylic. To, to seal it front back all the sides you don't want to um, have any air coming through because wood being a, a live object you know um, air will come through it it's a you know it used to be a living breathing object and then I um, after I sanded it down and got all the bumps out then I spray painted it with a uh, satin uh, spray paint I I think it's called Midnight Blue. I was going to do a, a, a Midnight Navy uh, base coat on this, but since I already had these rocks out, I thought I'm going to do it as a, or try to do it as a makeshift geode. I don't know what it's going to look like. Okay, see, you want to stir slowly until you get all the powder mixed in get all the powder wet in the resin and then you can stir like a well in my case like a mad woman Woo. okay there is my silver pearl it's 
slowly till it mixes in. You don't want it to poof back out and give you a unicorn fart in your face. Because if unicorns could fart, that's what their farts would be colorful. So I call, when the powder poofs out, I call it a unicorn fart. Now you want to make sure it mixes in all the way with everything. Okay, this is the uh, Neon Peach Red by um, Just Pigments. If you just look for JustPigments.com, you'll find it. They have uh, sample bags and they have uh, bigger bags. I think even their biggest amount comes in a bag too, which is kind of not good. You know, I'd like it. That's why I put it in a container and then put the label on it. Okay, here we go. This is probably going to look a little bit uh, red, white, and blue. And here it is at almost Halloween. But I don't really have any good Halloween colors, so I couldn't do this in Halloween. And this is the red. It's a... It's a, a, a mica from Just Pigments, and I'll put the name down in the description because I forgot to put the label on one of the jars. So, sorry about that. What I need to do is, is I need to make more labels and then just put them, because I ended up putting that in three jars. Okay, got my alcohol rag. Now I'm going to heat that up real quick to pop the air bubbles, and then I'm going to um, smooth it out. My rule of thumb with your heat gun is turn it on for five seconds, not pointing at your piece, to let the air bubbles, I mean the dust boogers, come out before you go putting it on there to get the air bubbles out. Because you don't want to blow the dust boogers in there. Okay. Now I'm going to use my fingers and I'm just going to smooth it out and cover the whole thing. I just want a thin layer of resin. I knew I was going to have a problem with these cups, but these cups are kind of stuck to the tray from something else that was on top of it earlier. And I didn't want to move them, so... I'll just have to suffer along. It's it, when it's on the cups the right way. It's um, whoops. Want to keep your alcohol rag away from where you're where you're uh, applying your heat at, because with that alcohol on your rag, it is very likely that the heat, even from a heat gun, will catch it on fire. So you don't want to have it close by. Okay, here we go. Um, I am just going to do, I know I got way too much in here probably, but I am just going to do some swooshes. Then I'm going to do um, maybe a little bit of torch and tilt or swiping, and then I'll add the rocks. You always want to start your pouring right off oops i just dragged my finger right through it well through the clear you want to start your um tilting or your pouring right off the edge so you get a clean start with what you poured down I have no idea how this is going to look. I'll probably have enough left of this stuff to do coasters, but that's okay. Now, because the background's dark, I'm just going to do a thin ribbon, well, drizzle, really, of this blue on top of it. Whoops, almost not. See, I put, them in, I put my cups in this so I don't get the problem of, the, um, of them tipping over and they... These smaller cups still tip over a little bit, but it doesn't spill the ribbon. Okay, I've already had the torch on today, so I don't need to worry about worry about that. Okay, what is that? Something's right there. And that's a dry spot. Okay, now 
I'm going to pick up my piece because I want to tilt it as I torch it. Okay, you want to get the resin right here where you want that to go warm, and then you want to put your heat on this. When it, when it starts smoking, back off. Okay, now I'm going to get the other side. Yeah, I put my thumb in a little bit of the clear, but oh well. Okay, heat up this resin, re resin so it has a... Oh, sorry, I had it way off camera. Heat up this resin so it's warm. Tilt it, and then apply your heat right here. I let some of it run off. Oh, look at those cells. I may not put glass on this. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to kind of let that one... Wait a minute, there we go. I'm going to kind of let that one sit a little bit. And I'm going to move my stuff over so I can put some cups down. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put glass on it or not, so it may just stay the way it is. Uh, the struggle is real, people. I do not have enough room for everything on my table. So I'm going to move that there. Um, these colors are so pretty. Do I have? Yeah. I have got four of these other shaped coasters that I'm going to do with these colors. So let me grab the four. Hang on a second. I was taping them earlier today. And I got four that's taped off on the back. I love these. You get these at Home Depot, okay? They are so pretty. Still debating about what I'm going to do with this. I see a spot right there that probably shouldn't be there, but, okay. I have no more clear, so let me put some of this blue on top of them. That'll make it kind of match. I am just sprinkling this on the coast, or drizzling this on the coaster. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just smooth it all out. Okay, I was starting to tell you where I get these at. I get these at Home Depot. They're in the tile section where, oh, come on. I need a little bit of blue right there. They're in the tile section where they got like the sheets of tiles. They come on a sheet. They don't come in a box. And you buy, uh, it's a sheet of 12 for, um, I'm thinking it was $14. Don't yell at me if I'm wrong. I do know that they're called arabesque. And I'll put that word down in the description. If I can find a link for them, I'll put that down in the description, too. But they come in a sheet, and they got this, like, webbing on the back, which I am I think is for people who are applying these on a floor or a wall to keep them all together. And then you just take the webbing off. You clean the back off as best you can. And then... You, um, you uh, tape the backs, and then you've got these nice shaped coasters. And I just spray paint the back when they're all coated. Now, because I'm doing these in craft coat, these will get another coat in art coat or stone coat epoxy, because both of those are heat resistant. You don't want a coffee cup. Um, 
thinking on that. Ah, uh, not sure what I'm going to do with that one yet. Okay, I'm going to do the two reds. Oops, come on. Just in a willy-nilly fashion. And I'm gonna then I'm gonna put a little bit of white on top of them and do a torch and tilt. Cause I that's my new favorite technique for getting cells is the torch and tilt. So thank you very much, Erica, for that. We call it the ATD TNT. TNT standing for torch and tilt and ATD standing for artist till death. The only thing you've got to worry about is, is A, don't burn your resin, okay, and B, um, don't burn your fingers, because if your finger's sticking out, it's going to, um, wait, I need my rag, it's going to um, um, drip onto your uh, finger, and you want to... You want to be in a well-ventilated area with this. Now, I didn't get a lot of the neon peach in there. Okay, I'm going to let that one sit for a minute. Oh, and the last thing I always tell people to worry about is be careful where you're letting it drip. Because it's very possible you could get a drip on the one that's below it. And you don't want that. It'll mess up your design. You don't want to heat it a long, long time. But when you heat it like that... And see, these are just micas. This is not any type of thing that you have to worry about getting cells. Okay. I'm going to let that one live for a little bit. And my piece over there is looking really, really good. I see one little thingy I've got to take out, which I'll do after I do these coasters. See, I like rocking it back and forth once it's really super liquidy. That's when I get a lot of cells. I mean, it's your preference which way you want to do this. Sorry for the glare. I have to figure out how to move my, move my lights back and at a 45 degree angle. Okay, let me torch this one, then I'm going to take a look at the painting and see if... I don't think I'm going to add rocks. I I don't think I am. I'll just put the rocks back into the containers. They were out for another project. I'm trying to keep this in camera without it... Without it... Um, wait a minute, let me... There we go. I'll drip it right here.
You don't need to keep the heat on there a lot because once you put a little bit of heat on there, wait a minute, let me move my rag, which has now been in the resin. Uh, okay. So, I am figuring this doesn't need anything. I, that, that one little spot right there is bugging me. So, let me get my tweezers. This little spot right here, which might be a big chunk from the, uh, from the uh, mica powder. Which is, you can mix and mix and mix and still have a little chunk sometimes. So, I do want to break up that one right there. There we go. Oops. I knew I should have took these cups off and used bigger things for this. Well, gonna let this one live. These, I want to add a little bit more of this on top because you can't really see it. It's more of the, wait a minute, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go right straight across. And torch and tilt that out. Okay, rag. You always want to have your rag handy to wipe off your fingers, but not near your torch. Okay, that one looks to me a little bit better. I know. Tell me down in the comments what you think, okay? Tell me if I should have just left the neon peach off or if I should have just... did what I'm doing. Okay, that one looks better. In my eyes, it looks better. Everybody's got their own opinion, okay? I will be honest. You know, everybody's got their own opinion about how it looks. So you may not like it and you may love it. Okay, I'm going to let that one live. I drip some resin on there. See, you got to be very, very careful when you're doing these so you don't drip your resin on the other pieces. So, you do have to do this in a well-ventilated area. Wear a mask if you think it might uh, bother your breathing. See, I dripped on this one, too. Let me just get rid of the drip that way. I dripped right there, too. I just don't want it to look like a drip, dripped blob. Okay, I'm going to let this one live. I'm going to let those live. So, I hope you learned something today. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Please like, uh, please click the subscribe button and the little bell for the notifications. So you'll know when my next video is up. I enjoy having you here watching me art. And all I can say is I love the resin right out of you. Bye for now.